Welcome to the very first episode of Just for Thrills, a podcast for all things thrilling. Jason, do you have anything to say? I got nothing to say. Good night. Um, what's going on, everybody? Um, what are we here to talk about? Uh, disgusting things. Cool, 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 cool. Let us, uh, yeah, let us introduce ourselves before we get into it. Um, my name is Jason Avalos. Um, I was born in a teepee off of the Appalachian Mountains. Now I just want to see my white partner, see what she says on that. Um, yeah, I'm Jason. I am a comedian. I'm a writer. Uh, I do a bunch of horseshit. A producer, a filmmaker. Um, and uh, sometimes I, I dabble in the mystical things. I don't know if, uh, if my partner here knew that, but I do dabble in some tarot reading, shamanism. I like the magical world, which is probably why I like horror so much. Um, and uh, my I didn't here, know I didn't know about the tarot. And isn't there like a little thing in your intro about you've done like 50, you know, we have to give ourselves, um, you know, like the respect, the reputation build up. Isn't there like a... I've been involved in over 50 movies. Oh, uh, yo, yeah, yeah. It's my hype man. It's my hype man. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I've done... So my background is um, basically I've been an actor since God knows when. And then um, about 12 years ago, I realized that there were no parts for brown guys except for stereotypical parts. So I decided, well, that's dumb. And so I'm gonna do something about that and direct some movies and write movies or film school to do that. Um, along the way, I learned some other parts of the um, things that I decided I really liked, like sound design um, and visual effects, animation. So I have worked in some of those other capacities. Um, and then I've worked on a crew as a script supervisor, uh, which basically, it is a person who sits next to the director and is, they consider it one of the hardest jobs on set because you have to be incredibly detailed um, when there's little continuity mistakes. Um, I'm the person who has to find it and make sure uh, everything matches and um, that way people cannot point out where the soda can was on the left side or that kind of stuff. So, um, okay. So one thing, so it's really cool listening to you talk and I'm going to do, I'm going to do my intro yeah. too. But for people listening, because this is our very first intro um, to the podcast, like the pre-episode to the episodes, what's really cool, I think, for listeners who decide to like join our journey is that we are from two totally different but uh, related aspects of the storytelling spectrum because you are 100% film. Like you're an actor, director, producing. You were mentioning some other gigs that are all part of that. So you're like the film side and then I come from I mean I have lawyer background as well which I'll talk about but I come from the literary side so I'm a young adult author and so I'm kind of all over the publishing so if we had a singer I feel like we <laughs> we kind of have all of it in the storytelling spectrum but I think it's cool for people you know tuning in or whatever to see that we kind of have you covered from all aspects of storytelling from the writer to the filmmaker um so I'll just do like my really quick 30 second introduction for people joining us. My name is Liani Kotcher. I am a veteran over 10 years trial attorney um, specializing in intellectual property and complex commercial litigation. I recently made the switch about three to four years ago. I am now a full-time young adult author. I also am a producer, a screenwriter, and a content creator. I have a pretty robust Instagram account at my pet, my pen name, not pet name. I almost said pet name. It's not a pet name. It's a pen name, uh, a pet name at my pen name, Rec Talk Ross. That's R-E-K-A-T-O-K-R-O-S-S. -E -S. And my debut young adult survival thriller, Ski Weekend, just came out in October. 
So I think with those intros behind us. Well, hey, hold on. Let me reverse yeah, the tape. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I got to do tape. a 30 second version. Yeah. I thought we were riffing. We were going to go off the handle. And then you pulled me way the fuck back. So <laughs> we're going to do it again. Or at least I'm going to do mine and I'll make it a little more succinct. And then we can go deep dive a little later. Okay. Um, so uh, to trail back, I am a actor. Uh, which is my primary job. Um, and then through that, I have uh, picked up the camera, picked up the pen and become a writer and filmmaker. Um, I've worked on over 50, 60 feature films, pilots, commercials, from Hallmark movies to horror zombie films to, you know, dramas um, and worked with a lot of great A-list talent. Um, and, uh, and, and so my background is basically going to come from that and um, trying to unpack horror and thrillers from the side of the, the filmmaker. Um, and, and yeah, and then uh, my partner here is going to take it from the, the literary sense. That sounds good. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the podcast for people. This is their first exposure to Just for Thrills. So... I think maybe, you know, just a little bit about why we decided to start the podcast could be helpful. We're both like, Jason and I both wrote up a list, like an outline for our intro and we have it on one iPad. So we're like sharing it under the screens of you see us like if you're watching the video and not just listening to the audio, you can see us like fighting under the table for who gets to hold the, the, the iPad with the outline. Um, but okay, so why, why did we decide on a horror podcast. I think one thing that's really cool for people, you know, listeners who are to get to know us. So we actually met, like, this is kind of crazy. We met at Sundance at the film festival. So we were both there for, you know, different things. Again, I was there for literary and um, Instagram influencer stuff. I was interviewing a couple of um, book to TV adaptations. And Jason, you were there on the film side, right? Yeah, I was there uh, to support some other friends and filmmakers and uh i had just uh basically went to like a, some kind of like a music one of the music lounges and was, we were at a bar at right? like noon uh yeah to mingle though to mingle. i was not drinking or you were probably <laughs> no drinking. i wasn't no i i had just finished up on um, no i wasn't i had just <laughs> i had just finished up um a really cool women's panel um although i forget it was a really big female <laughs> filmmaker and wow. I can't remember who it is wow. and how. ladies I know it was come a good her. panel though come get her. Um, and, <laughs> and, and I we left were... and we I, I went to go mingle and it was like a s'mores oh yeah we were doing like a, a s'mores, s'mores fire and which coffee actually and pretty great a kind of a nice cute little way to yeah. meet people you know yeah so so we met we met at Sundance and through that we've kind of you know become friends both of us interested in storytelling and we were kind of exploring like what what would be fun, what could we do together? We knew we both wanted to branch out and do more than just like our respective professions, you know, me being the author and him being the filmmaker. Um, and we realized we both really love horror. And it's funny because we are like completely different people in so many ways, but we found like a unifying thing about horror that we both really related to and really loved. And I think um one of the things we talked about, we were like, well, maybe we should do horror to introduce people to who don't already know about it. And um, we really wanted to make it accessible. I think that's the thing that we really bonded over is that, you know, people from all different walks of life, all different, you know, backgrounds, socioeconomic, religion, genders, um, culturally, everything. There's something just like so universal about horror. It's the stakes are so high in it. It's always, you know, life and death that really makes you examine your values in life. And I think that's something we both loved about it. And we both also um, had situations where people didn't understand, like, why do we like horror so much? Uh, they didn't get it. They think it's just like this weird, um, you know, small genre thing that belongs in like some closet somewhere. And we yeah. were like, no, we want to share with others. Um, our love for horror and really expose people who might not think they enjoy it that like you probably don't know but that there's you're a lot watching horror all the time <laughs> folks I mean people watch um, you know and we're, and we're when we say horror I think what we're, we're kind of talking about is you know like one of your favorites is like I know what you did last summer yeah where depending on who you're talking to 
will say that's you know that's super camp it's super totally. lighthearted or a comedy fun. event some people think right. it's like a funny i mean i just made my uh roommate the other day watch leprechaun for the first time for for saint patty's day and yeah. she is not a horror person at all and she was it just totally like that made her day and that totally is probably the reason i love to get people excited and find ways that whets their appetite and i think that's always fun for me you know and we also talked about like how much we love elevated horror and that we feel like it doesn't get its due and that that's something else we would love to expose people to so um you know like michael flanagan is someone that you know we, we both think we both talked about we really respect his work and a lot of people i think um hunting of hill house uh midnight mass a lot of midnight people mass. just think, you know, horror, I'm not going to watch and I'm not into it. I'm scared of it or whatever. And they're missing out on just like some fantastic, really intelligent filmmaking that's going on just because they have in their head this crazy idea of what they think horror is. I mean, Get Out is another Get wonderful Out's example of just changer, right? incredibly intelligent horror. It's, you know, happening right now. So I think that's, we really bonded over it. We think it's like an incredible genre um, and we think it's really misunderstood. And so we wanted to try and appeal to what like the common man who doesn't know the common man, man yeah the everyday man the or everyday. woman or other and days and we want you to say hey maybe i maybe i do my car maybe i'm a, I'm a freak and then jason what were you telling because we did a lot of research too um so we're both like kind of type a research people <laughs> and we look we looked right to see what was out there what did you tell me earlier about the podcast that you were seeing and why yeah was yeah different? it was interesting because um and, and i have done uh a few podcasts uh, on other friends' podcasts and what have you, and and um, I'm always looking for new ones myself. So I really wanted to see what was out there, and there's just there's some great stuff out there. But um, a lot of the uh, the true crime and horror stuff that you see out there is not it's it's, it's very like fan oriented, and it's very like kind of like super fans, you know, and and that's yeah. super awesome. And or they give reviews. And, and we'll probably do some of that in our own way. But I think what makes us interesting is we're always trying to unpack the story, why it should resonate to a wider audience. Yes. Um, also, like for me, I'm also interested in like the business of horror, like marketing horror, like um, and how that works into every single person's life. If you are a content creator, for an example, like you're going to make Halloween content. You know what I mean? Like, do you know what's out there? Like, how can you, you know, so I, I do think right. there's room for everybody to like jump into horror, even if they don't know it. Like, and everybody almost is a content creator nowadays. So like, so you're just doing yourself a disservice by not understanding um, where you could go with it. I love that. I totally agree. And like, we are super fans. So I feel like we really identify with the podcast. The author, yeah, but big yeah, I feel like you have to know so much um to kind of get into that and it's not it's like not a gateway like we want to be the gateway drug we're the gateways we're we your gateway, drug. The gateway yeah. drug to horror um so i think that was kind of like <laughs> 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 it sounds funny when you say it like that but i think that was like the genesis of it like we just love yeah. it we want to expose people to it um and especially people that don't think that they like it and you do. You just don't know. You don't you know. You just don't like know. It. I mean, if you like Stranger Things, you're Silence, oh, Silence of the, the Lambs, Lambs, Seven, Seven Zodiac. If you read any true crime like American Predator, we just read them in my book club. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, that's horror. That's as horror. If you're a like, housewife who's you sipping said. wine, watching ID channel, true crime, uh, you like horror. Yeah, you like horror. You like horror. You just don't yeah. know it. Um, okay, so we talked about, you know, the genesis of it. We talked about, I think we also talked, you know, about why we like horror. And I'm sure that's going to come up more and more in our podcast with our guests. Yeah. They're going to talk about what they love about the genre, what we like about it. Um, and then I think what's really unique, too, about our podcast is that we have really a very broad definition of horror. So we consider, like, not just the gory splatter Texas Chainsaw, which, no. I mean... But Jason's a big fan of it. I, I do can enjoy I do it. Yeah. But we have like a very broad definition. So we're going to bring you, um, you know, experts and people in the industry, both, you know, New York Times bestselling authors, celebrity, pop culture celebrities, 
um, musicians, people from all different aspects of entertainment. And we're going to talk about a really broad spectrum of horror. So under that umbrella, we include true crime. We're going to include like urban, ghost stories, yeah. urban legends. legends. Um, what else? Ghost stories. You say that. Uh, I think uh, vampires, vampires, werewolves. Um, I love camping gone wrong stories, survival stories. I love, um, yeah, like I love serial killer stories. Yeah. Um, uh, I also, I've been really into, we can go into like, I'm, I'm really into BIPOC and, um, like feminist horror. There's some really great French filmmakers doing really strong femme horror that I'm into. Um, one of them just won the Cannes Film Festival yeah. last year for her next film. And, you know, just to show you, horror is elevated. There's art house. There's so for you fancy pantsers, you know, we've got something for you. And then, um, I was also thinking like, what is it? Mexican Gothic. I literally was just talking about this earlier today to someone oh, I was blanking on what it's called. That um, Gothic horror. Yeah, yeah. So Gothic horror, we're going to talk about horror and literature, scary books. So like Stephen King, Dean Coons, thrillers as well. Like what I write, I write, you know, horror adjacent. Although my, my current work in progress is like a straight up thriller horror. It's kind of like Agatha Christie meets I Know You Did Last Summer. So I think we just, we have like a very broad outlook. I think we also talked about even doing cyber crimes. Oh yeah, yeah. I just, side note, I just started getting into cyber crimes because yeah. I'm writing on a podcast that is uh, primarily cyber crimes and I know nothing of that and I'm finding that really crazy. Like it's a whole other subset right. of, uh, not horror, but but there are some horrific, you know, horrific weird stories. People out there on the internet and doing frightening. creepy shit. Yeah. Very frightening. Very frightening. You know, the dark web, there's like a lot of crazy stuff and um, cyber wars. I mean, there's a lot. So yeah. I think the cool thing about this is we are going to expose you to horror if you think you don't like it or you don't know about it. If you already love it, you're going to love what we talk about. And then I think we're going to take a really broad outlook on it. So, you know, we say this, there's really something for everyone in our podcast. So I think that's what we are super excited about. And we're really excited to bring some of our creative, you know, creative storytelling friends into the podcast to introduce their works to you. Definitely. So um, our author friends out there who are doing some really cool stuff, other directors, other producers, we're going to get some musicians, yes, some pop get some musicians. culture figures. Some and rock just, stars. Rock stars and horror go together like peanut butter and jelly. They I mean, absolutely you know what I mean? do. So we're going to get some of them to come in and talk to us about what makes them freak out and get freaky and write their music. Uh, so I think some of that's going to be really fun to, to unpack what these people <laughs> go through when they're making their art. So that's what you have to look forward to. I think, you know, one other thing we're really passionate about is making recommendations. So if you, you know, are looking to kind of get to know some new horror, some new thrillers that you haven't been exposed to. I think we both get really excited about that and we definitely want to make that a part of the podcast. So I think you'll want to join us just for that alone. I think every episode we're really planning to talk about what we're currently reading, watching on TV, movies. Um, so we're super into Rex. I think in that line, I'd love to know, Jason, what was your like first, because we're saying like we're the gateway horror drug. Like what was your first kind of gateway or exposure to horror? Ooh, uh, well, I think that is where we are very, very similar, really. I mean, I, I do, um, I was trying to remember the other day. I, can I, bear with me, folks. Uh, the movie that made me want to be a filmmaker, which is one of those pivotal things, was okay. The Fly. Oh. The Fly was everything... I just, it had horror, it had sci-fi, it dealt with tech, it had effects, it had brilliant acting and like it's a It's really story. strong. So it's funny. Ooh. I don't think I've ever seen the whole thing, but I obviously know what it's about because it's super famous. I think it's it. also really well known thematically to be a really intelligent story. Yeah. I think, and I didn't know that horror could be intelligent and I like to think I'm pretty smart. So I was like, oh, this is cool. You can, you can have that. And you know, you think of horror, I guess you maybe think of dumb stuff. I think, I think that other people with general audiences can't think that way. And I'm like, no, it's, it's really higher level thought process yeah. that goes into that stuff. And then, you know, but I think 
Nightmare on Elm Street is really the the papa. He was my Superman, and it's terrible to say in this day and age, but he was like Superman to me. Freddy Krueger was my man. Me and my best friend. We loved the <laughs> shit out of Freddy and had every single Freddy thing there was. A mask, the claws, the hats, the sweaters. I mean, uh, so sad. So sad. And all that sadness. What about you? No, your- that's so funny. I don't think we actually talked about that. I mean, I know that you know that I'm like a huge Nose fan, but I don't think we talked about that was actually my first horror movie. Um, and I was really young. I think I was, well, I don't give away. Well, whatever. Who cares about my age? So I'm old. <laughs> so I was like five when it You're came out. Years old. Yes. <laughs> uh, I wasn't born. I saw it on the remakes or whatever. Um, <laughs> no, uh, my brother, I have an older brother. And I remember he was like too scared to watch it alone. So our parents were out of the house and he made me watch. And I was like five or six years old. And I just remember I, uh, Freddy Krueger literally has been a lifetime for me, boogeyman. Um, I'm still terrified of him. I still like sleep with the lights on if I'm home alone or whatever. And my brother was not helpful. He used to terrorize me too about Freddy Krueger. I think like uh, I was really traumatized by it, but in some way it was such like a visceral, impactful experience in my childhood that ever since then, I've just really been into horror. And I don't know if it's like trying to like, get charge of my fears or take control of my fears and kind of exert my own power of it because I've always been so scared of, of Freddy or whatever, but it definitely for me was a gateway. I think I just kind of wanted to like test myself after that. Like what can I watch and not have to run out of the room? Um, and I think it just kind of grew from there and I realized like, okay, I actually really love this. And I think for me, like Freddy was definitely the gateway that and. And that's like, re- like really started to get me into it. But I think for me, when I really realized how much I loved horror was I was in college and I mm-hmm. took a film class and I don't even, I can't remember why this was the assignment, but it was like, write a paper on a you know movie that really uh, resonates with you and really unpack it and figure out like culturally what's going on in the movie. And oh, I yeah. really like, I don't know why I picked The Exorcist. I don't feel like the teacher assigned it um, but again, I just, with the Freddy thing, I think I've just always had this fascination with porn. I did it on the X, and that's when I first realized, I think at a young age, I was like 19 or 20, just how intelligent horror is and how like ingrained in our culture, um, in our fears, horror really is and how it helps unpack things. And so like some of the things I realized when I started digging into that, you know, we read, I don't know if you ever read it, we read, uh. It's like women, chainsaws, and I forget, it's like the seminal piece about Final Girls by uh, Carol, I'm blanking on her last name. I know what you're talking about though, but I- Yeah, okay, it's like the seminal thing. So like, I read that as part of the research. It's an amazing, um, like amazing story or whatever. And I learned a lot about how the exorcist is really about the family, like the nuclear family and the dynamics of the nuclear family and like, The reason, you know, basically like everything was kind of dying down. It was like the Reagan era and people were starting to get divorced and like families were breaking up. And so a huge part of the exorcist was like, we got to keep the family together because when the father leaves, it was like a divorced family. When the father leaves or whatever, um, then the devil comes in. And like the only one that can save you from the devil is the father. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, so it's when I first started seeing, like, at a higher level. No, but that's exactly, I mean, I remember, like, in college, I remember, like, in college, I uh, got, I was taking a horror class, and it was amazing. They had, uh, um, they asked us to do the same thing, pick a movie from one of the eras, and then figure out exactly what was the reason behind that, what was going on during that time. And and I, I realized I was good at understanding that, and then I think, you know, um, looking at, you know, what we've all gone, been going through in this past, like, two, totally. three years, this is why you're going to see and already seeing, like, so much horror coming back. We have done this since film has ever been. We unpack our fears through films like this. this and is books. The, yeah, and, and books. And, yeah, but this is how we unpack yeah. those traumas and fears. And uh, it's, it's something we actually like need as a culture because sometimes, you know, meet cutes don't do it. 
Okay, so what about, so we're going to kind of wind it down because we said this was our first episode in a very quick, like 25, 30 minute intro. Mm -hmm. What about, we said we're really into Rex. Like what, what are you loving right now in books, film or TV, in horror, thriller? Uh, so many things, but I think I am very focused on like, um, I'm really focused on inclusive horror and I'm really kind of plugged into like art house and like feminist horror. Those are like my three that I'm really watching the most. Um, I think it's in a high day right now. So starting from Get Out, there's this movie called Raw by Julie uh, Dussournois. I kind of butchered her name there. Um, uh, Stranger Things, also amazing. Um, Zodiac, Mindhunter. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, those that's are like- That's a lot, we're gonna have like more episodes. You don't have to put them those all Those are first. four. Those are four <laughs> I spread across the board, lady. All right, Um. so for me, I already said Michael Flanagan. I think he's just amazing and he's about to adapt one of my all time favorite um, authors growing up, who's Christopher Pike. Michael Flanagan is doing The Midnight Club. So I'm so excited about that. Um, I recently saw his uh, Hill House. So I was kind of late to the party, but I thought it was <clears throat> incredible, like so phenomenal. Um, as far as books, I think I really did enjoy Mexican Gothic. I read that uh, maybe a couple months ago. I think that was kind of like a really enjoyable uh, horror, gothic horror that I've read recently. I'm trying to think if there's anything kind of on the immediate radar. Um, that's probably, oh, I saw, so I saw the um, uh, wrong turn. So the most recent wrong turn, and I actually liked it. I was surprised. I thought it was not going to be so good because it was, have you seen it? No, but wait, you stopping me and you're going oh, no, to okay, wrong okay. turn? Okay, okay. 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 Me, <laughs> wrong turn. I thought the new one was really good. Okay. So last thing as we wrap up, where, where can people find us? They can find us uh, <laughs> everywhere. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I will put the things on the link at Insta Avalos, I-N-S-T-A-A-V-A-L-O-S. Um, Twitter, you can find me, just my name, Jason Avalos. And same thing on TikTok, uh, Jason Avalos, and YouTube, all the same. Um, and so I'm at Rec Talk Ross everywhere, R-E-K-T-O-K-R-O-S-S. And then the podcast, we're going to get, you know, this, this first episode is up, so you're obviously listening to it. You can get ready for the others and subscribe to our YouTube station. Um, also, it'll be on iTunes, Spotify. They will be coming out every other week, and we are going to start dropping them this summer. Summer's here, and we're here, and it's going to be spooky. All right. So any other <laughs> final words? No. Uh, I think the only thing is um, community. Uh you mentioned it and I just want to echo it again is that like we're really here to try to help and like navigate things y'all are interested in so if there are things uh feel free to send it especially this first season I mean we're super open to to what makes you all tick and what gets you excited and things you want to explore so um we're gonna have some fun things behind uh behind the scenes and we'll share that uh, but yeah, I think I think that's that's something I really want uh, people to take away from. All right. Well, we will see you and be talking with you more come July. Yes, we'll see you in July. Don't get scared. It's just for thrills. <laughs> <laughs>